Hey guys, this is Gio from Smart Art Makers. Today in this video, we're going to look at the Unified Switch Lite 16 port PoE. So I'm upgrading from an 8 port Unified Switch to this new Unified Lite Switch 16 port. In this video, we're going to look at the specs of this device, why I purchased it, why I'm migrating, how to actually migrate from an existing switch to a new switch, what I'm doing step by step, and also the installation of this in the Unified portal. By the end of the video, we should have this mounted in my network cabinet, configured and all ready to go. In future videos, I'll be also looking at doing a VLAN and doing all sorts of IoT networks for my smart home. So while I purchased the 16 point PoE, I actually also got the eight port version over here and I've got the five port flex mini version. So I'll be looking at these in separate videos. Now let's get right into this one and let's roll the intro. Awesome, so as I mentioned in other videos, it's really good idea to have a plan. So now I'm gonna share my screen, I'm gonna show you my own plan for my switch migration. Now, as you can see here, I already have a few Unify devices. I have a USG, a Unify switch, and two access points. Now, the one device that I'm going to be replacing is the Unify switch 8 port PoE 60 watts. The actual model number is US 860 watts. I'm going to show you what I've documented, all the information that I wrote down before I actually go and unplug stuff and actually put the new one in. If you don't have a switch, you can just go ahead and just install it. That shouldn't be a problem. But if you're replacing existing equipment, which is actually powering your network, then think about this quite carefully. And you might consider checking out my blog where you find this information in a bit more detail of how I'm planning this. So I created a quick Word document or page document and I've uh, captured a few information. So first of all, just for your context, this is what I'm migrating to. I, so I copied the information from the screen over here. So this will depend on what information you currently have. So just took all of this information here. I clicked around, I've looked at a few things that I thought I might need. So what I've done is I've got some current information, the MAC address, IP address, a uh, really important one is the power consumption that the PoE switch is actually given out. So it's got a maximum of 50 watts and it's given out uh, 60 watts. So my new device will actually have a uh, less capacity, about 45 watts, but that should be quite fine because I'm within 16 watts currently with all of my devices plugged in. This device has been working really well. You can see it's been up for like 56 days and it's running and currently running at 30% memory usage. So I can then compare the stats when I replace this with my new device to see how it actually goes. Uh, what I did was I just logged into my uh, network controller, my unified network, and I just went to the switch and I just got all of the information over here. Other and relevant information are the clients. So the clients basically they're like the devices of this computer, a laptop, any network device that's currently connected. Or well, let's say, even if it's not connected directly to the switch, but it's connected through the switch. So you might have another switch that connects to this switch. So you see, basically what this means is if, you, if I unplug this device, the certain list of devices will go offline. So I capture that. Let me show you now here. I've got the IP addresses of certain important devices. This device over here, this is very important. It's the uh, cloud controller. So what I will do is I'll go format and I'll just highlight it yellow so I know that if this goes offline, I have a problem. I have an edge router, which is another networking device that it, because it's not a part of the Unify Ubiquiti family, well, it's part of the Ubiquiti family, but not part of Unify. I can't see it in my Unify controller, but however, it still depends on this device. So I've highlighted it as very important. I also have Home Assistant linked to this device various other devices, but the main one I want to highlight here is the uh, iMac. Now, why is the iMac relevant? Because I'm actually at the iMac now doing this video. And um, if I obviously change, if I'm relying on this computer to, you know, make my network changes, and this computer goes offline and it cannot access the switch, right? And it cannot do anything. So this is going to be something that I need to think of. I have any, maybe a laptop, or I need to find a way to keep this uh, computer connected to the internet. So in this screenshot over here, you can see some information around the ports and more information around the clients over here. So let me show you the ports in more detail through the actual 
Unify uh, controller. Zoom in a bit. Awesome, so these are the ports that I have currently. So it's an eight port switch. I have the status of the port, meaning that all of these switches are on green, they're pulling. Few of them are actually uh, pulling power also, and you can see the power by the PoE status, and you can see the current level of watts. And you can label these devices. Now, for its best practice to label the devices with whatever they're connected to. But as you can see here, I haven't actually done that. I've got port one, port two, port three, port four. So this is a good chance to, with the new device to label the ports accordingly. So when I need to find out what is connected on each port of the switch, I actually know um, what I'm talking about without actually going down to the cabinet. Now, hopefully the networking cabinet is then aligned with the labels. If not, that's pointless. I have the devices over here. So these devices actually are plugged in. So I know that I've got a few IP cameras and I have a few access points linked to this device. You can actually go to the overview details page, go to downlinks, and you can find out the devices that are in the Unify uh, ecosystem that are actually dependent. So on port three, I have an access point, and on port seven, I have the uh, another access point, the in-wall version, which I've got a video of. So if this device goes offline, my basically my whole Wi-Fi network goes offline. So I'm quite happy with the current level of planning. Now I'm going to take the device, I'm going to give it some power. So I'm going to try to power it on. And I'm also going to then configure it into the Unify. Once that's configured, and I'm happy with the device. I'm going to plan all the ports that I'm going to add in. And then I'm going to go and directly deploy it. The Unify Switch Lite 16 PoE is a fully managed layer 2 switch with 16 gigabit Ethernet ports. So it comes beautifully presented in this cardboard package. It's good to the feet touch. They've changed the packaging since the last time I purchased these. So as you can see here, uh, we have more information about the uh, product. So you have 16 gigabit RJ45 ports, 8 auto sensing 802.3 AT PoE Plus ports. We have 60 watts of internal power. However, if we look carefully at the box, it actually says that the USW Lite has 45 watts of PoE to power unified devices. So this is gonna be a little bit of a limitation here, depending on how many devices you're planning to plug in. But the benefits of this device is a sort of form factor compared to the other options. Okay, so we can see the product here peeking through. Let me flip this around. So we have the switch itself. It has some weight to it, but it looks really nice. Okay, so we have our power supply here. We have this mount to actually mount the product on the wall. Some instructions. Ah, okay, so we also got the fixtures and fittings. Because I live in the UK, they actually throw in a, a UK power supply. Now let's take this, let's open it up a bit more. Okay, so we can see here, we have the ports numbered, one to 15, and then we've got two to 16. So we've got even ports on the bottom and we've got odd ports on the top. So looking at this carefully, you can see the symbol with the power, with the plus. So that's the PoE power. So one to eight are the PoE auto sensing ports and nine to 16 other ports are non-PoE. You have a reset button over here. We've got our Unify network information here, and this is where we can clip this device. So I'm assuming something like this, and it will clip, and it will hang on the wall. We have a big power supply here. Clean branding, just that uh, Ubiquiti branding over here, and that's all good. If you go to the Ubiquiti website, you should be able to see the manual and the instructions to actually see how to get this up and running. It's very straightforward. You connect power into it and you just you can mount it to the wall. I'll be doing that later. First, I'm going to be configuring it on my desk as it is because that's going to be easier. And then once it's configured, I'll just put it in the wall and it will be all fine. So as you can see, you have internet, then gateway, and then it goes into this port over here. So it looks like we need to put it in port 15. So let's get it, give this a go. Plug it in now on the network cable on my desk. Let's go to the Unified Controller and boom, bam, 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 bam. There it is. We have our USW Lite 16 port POC, POE 505. I don't know what 505 is. Let's see. So we have a provisional 
network IP address pending adoption. So what I'll do is I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna click adopt. It's provisioning now. Okay, so I've refreshed the page and we've got it all configured. So we've got this little symbol here for an upgrade. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna go and upgrade it. We have the version, so it's gonna to go to the latest version 5.43. I'm fine with that. So as you can see from this image over here, we have our port 15 occupied by the uplink. So the uplink means the basically internet, well, let me, let me simplify this. The network basically is coming in from somewhere and this is the source of the network. All the other devices will be giving, giving network. So it needs to get network from somewhere and it's gonna get it's getting it from port 15, which is our uplink. It took around a couple of minutes. What I did, I closed the browser down and I reopened it because it keep giving me a, an updating symbol. So now it's all, all updated. Now I'm gonna go away, have a think about this. I'm gonna think about what ports, um, which devices I'm gonna be connected to these ports, how I'm gonna name them. So once I've thought that through carefully, I'll come back and I'll see you. Probably see you just in a few seconds. If you smash that like button, it will help this video, spread the word and more people will see it. If you're interested in this networking series or learning more about how to build a smart home, then subscribe to the channel. Okay, so we're back a few days later. I've got it all configured up in my network cabinet. I have the Unify US Lite 16 port PoE. Currently, it's got a 40% CPU usage and 29% memory usage. So I've got more things running on this device than what I had on my previous device. Device, This device over here actually moved this somewhere else in the home. So let me click on this and let me go through what I actually did to um, get it all up and running. So as you remember, you're going to need to put in, in port 15 your uplink. And my uplink is my USG, which is this router over here. So on the, once that was done, what, you, what I um, initially need to do is is to think about the devices that need PoE and the devices that don't need PoE. So the devices basically that don't need any power. You wanna put them between port nine to port uh, 16, excluding 15, which 15 would be your uplink. And all of your PoE devices, try to put them, well, you're going to need to put them between port one and port eight. It doesn't matter which port you use to power them, it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, so at the moment I have six PoE devices powered in. I have two free empty slots for future expansion. So that's, uh, that's fine, it's not great, ideal. I would love, love to have more ports for future, but that's not a problem at all. Let's look at the stats then now at the moment. So we can compare it with my uh, document I have over here. So my PoE consumption was around 16 watts previously. So PoE consumption has gone up to 20 watts over 42. So I'm currently consuming 50% of the capacity, which I think is really good. The reason why is because I have more things connected to it. In the previous uh, sensor, let me show you, in this one over here, I only had one, two, three, four, PoE port, but over here I have many more. So let's go through what we have. So I have the Unify in-wall access point. That's currently drawing 3.7 watts. I have the Unified Cloud Key Gen 2. That's drawing 6.5 watts. I have a Unified G3 Flex camera. That's uh, giving us 2.5 watts. Real Link camera, which I installed outside. Uh, that's 3.3 watts. I have an Anki camera. Uh, 1.5 watts, another, another unified G3 dome camera around 2.8 watts. This overall is quite good. That means that if I were going to add a couple of more uh, unified cameras like these G3s or the G4s that come out recently, that would be another 3 watts. Let's say another 6 watts would bring me to a total of 26, 28. So I'm well within the capacity of this uh, PoE uh, switch, which was, which was my concern. My other concern was around uh, memory usage and we're around 29%, so it's looking all good. Um, interesting thing to note here, the ports, you can uh, rename the port, so I did that. I went and renamed them with the devices, so you just go on the pencil, 
and just put in the name here and then click apply. Down the line, I'll be adding VLANs in the next videos and I'll be doing more configuration. But for the moment, I'm gonna leave it as it is. So question for you guys now, do you think I should put this as a static IP? Should I have my switch as static IP or should I leave it dynamic? Because I'm quite undecided. I'd love to put it static, but I'm not sure if there are gonna be any drawbacks or if this is gonna cause any issue let me know in the comments down below and i hope you enjoyed the video i'm going to leave you with a playlist with more of unify videos if you're interested in home networking if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe to the channel stay safe and i'll see you in the next one bye